Luke and Nate here with catsandcarp.com and we're at the Ebro River in Spain catching massive fish. And we're gonna show you what's going on guys. We're having an awesome adventure. <laughs> <laughs> well guys we're here on the banks of the Ebro River which is one of the most famous fishing rivers in Europe it's home of massive Wells catfish monsters absolute monsters but also less well known for its monster carp this place is one of the best places in the world if you want to go and catch massive wild carp now, there's a lot of places, little pay lakes across Europe, where people go and stock carp and feed them and raise them and breed them to be huge. But if you want to catch wild fish, this is one of the best places to catch massive ones. And uh, this has been a bucket list for, for me for a long time. And it's here in January, and it is a perfect time to catch big carp. Um, the other thing that really makes this place unique is how cheap it is to come and fish here. Uh, me and Nathan were actually looking at doing uh, some some trips, going ice fishing in Michigan and a few other things, and we got looking at it. It's cheaper for us to fly to Spain and come fish here for a week than it would be to fly to Michigan and fish for three days. It's uh, the price difference is staggering, and in January. Airline tickets are dirt cheap, hotels are dirt cheap, rental cars are dirt cheap. It's just an amazing price difference. And and so if you guys want to do a, a bucket list trip where you go and catch big fish, this is this is the place. And uh, right now we're we just barely got to this spot. We're setting up our gear and we're gonna be setting up some camping gear because we're gonna be literally camping on the banks of the river and fishing. Um, at least tonight and who knows depending on how things go we might even stay longer than that but uh it's it's we're excited aren't we nate yeah all right guys so check it out he's putting together what's called a pva stringer it's this biodegradable cornstarch plastic like stuff that uh makes a little necklace of boilies attaches it to the hook and when it hits fresh water it melts away and then drops all that bait around the hook so just a nice little morsel you know Oh, right there have attracted. It's perfect in the winter time and when you want to get something out quick. Yeah, and, uh, Nick makes these boilies himself. He actually has a bait company where he makes these. So if you guys are ever in Spain and need some boilies, check them out. I don't know what it is about this spot, but it just screams big fish to me. Yep. Turn the He's on. Easy, easy, easy. Right, remember how I told you how to play it? <laughs> hey Nathan, you want to come help? You want to help? It's hard. Oh, it's... <laughs> bring it, bring it to me. You You're doing a great job, Nate. There you go. That's it. Now let it go. Oh, thank you, Nathan. That's brilliant. Oh yeah, that's that's yeah, oh, that's a big. That's a good fatty plus. Oh, that's a fat fish. <laughs> Oh. Right. 37 and three quarters. Holy mackerel, my first Spanish carp and a new personal best. 37, oh jeez, and three quarter. Look at that. Cool. Oh. Oh. All right, should we get him back? Let's get him back. That's a beauty. Oh. All right, Porky. Oh, Whoa. big boy. <laughs> Need some help? Yeah, I reckon. Oh. 37 and three quarter pounds. That's my new personal best for common carp. That is, that is awesome. Yeah. That was a huge fish, man. He hurt my back lifting that thing. I am so excited, guys. You don't know how long I've been waiting to do just that. But I'm going to go cast this back out, and we're going to go get another one. I barely got our rods out. We had one hit um, that didn't hook up, and then we just landed that fish, and we haven't been here long at all. So 
uh, I think it's a good sign. I just, this place just has all sorts of good vibes about it. Luckily, I've got myself a good chair. Nathan's got plenty of mud and sand to play with. So uh, I think we can, we can dig in for the long haul here. All right, for you guys who don't know already, this is a rod pod. This is what carp anglers in Europe use to, to set up their rods. And we've got these bidal arms and bobbins uh, attached to them. And we use bidal arms a lot more for carp fishing because we're gonna be here for a long time and we're gonna be sleeping here. We need something that's gonna wake us up at night and we need to be able to fuss with us up, set up our gear, watch Nathan, and still be able to know whether something's happening with our lines. Uh, so but this stuff, I'll tell you, works just as good for catfishing as well. So any of you uh, bank fishermen out there like to go for catfish, these rod pods and bite alarms are nice. These are the bite alarms. These are the Fox Micron series. Uh, really nice, uh, it's mid-level bite alarms. Uh, great, great bite alarms. They, you buy them separately and they screw into the rod pod. And these bobbins um, are designed to detect drop back bites. If the fish grabs your hook and runs towards you, uh, it won't pull line through the bite alarm, it, so it'll just put slack in your line. And this little weight pulls the slack through the bite alarm and sets off the bite alarm. So it allows you to detect bites no matter which direction the fish runs. Uh, if you're using just like bells or something like that or a, a bait clicker, it'll only detect bites if the fish runs away from you. Okay, so these rods are made by Sonic and the model is the Vader X. They're 12 foot, two piece, 3.5 test curve a rod, which is nice because they got enough backbone to throw big leads and they got enough backbone to handle these big carp and the occasional uh, smaller catfish. These are some Shimano bait runner reels. They've got this switch on here and a two drag system. So you can have uh, the one drag set really low and one drag set really high. And when it's in the rod holder, you flip the switch and activate the low drag so the the carp can't take your rod into the water. And as soon as you pick up your rod, you turn the handle or flip the switch and it activates the fighting drag. I know some of you guys watching this are cat fishermen. This gear is really good for cat fishing, especially if you want to cast long distances. This stuff is, is great. I mean, and you can handle big catfish on it. Big as anything you'll find in the US, you can handle on these rods. But they're still a lot of fun with channel cats and stuff. These longer carp rods are really sensitive and good with a variety of, of sizes. It is just so expensive and cumbersome to try to ship all my fishing gear from the US here to Spain. And for such a reasonable price, I can hire an expert who knows this place like the back of his hand and he'll bring all the gear and everything. I just need to bring clothes and just walk off a plane and I get to go fishing. So if you guys are thinking about doing this, definitely, definitely hire a guide. And I'll put Nick's uh, contact information in the description below. So if you guys wanna use his services, definitely check him out. All right, Nick's setting up the uh, the bivy, which is uh, the carp fishing tent. They, they actually sell sleeping bags and, and cots and tents specifically designed for carp fishing. The biggest differences between like a normal tent and a carp fishing bivy is you get the big wide open entrances so that you can run out of them and grab your rods quickly without breaking your neck. They also are made of higher grade material and better in cold weather and foul weather because you know campers usually only go camping when the weather's nice but carp fishermen they fish no matter what the weather. Now apparently you can catch carp all year round here on the Ebro River. Um, the winter time seems to be the best if you're targeting the real big boys. If you want to get bigger numbers, the summer's probably better. And the catfish tend to do better when the weather's warm. So if you want big catfish, you know, the summertime and the warm weather time seems to be best. Here we go, buddy. You got a fish. Look what this is. Yes. Yeah, come here. You want to hold him? Yeah. Say cheese. cheese. This is a river chub. Okay, I've never caught one of these, so this is my new PB. Look at that. That's a beauty. Big old river chub. All right, let's get him back in. Well, that is my first and only European river chub. Um, I don't know much about them, but I don't think they get much bigger than that. I think that's actually a real decent chub. Um, and it would have to be to swallow that pellet. That was a 20 millimeter halibut pellet and uh, with like a four number four hook in it. So uh, that was uh, pretty impressive that he got that. Getting a lot of little taps on these two pellet rods. 
And I know chubs like to eat pellets, so I'm assuming we're getting a lot of chub bites. That's banging it away. That's probably another one. Oh, this is more substantial. No, it's a little it's a little carp. He's a baby carp. He's a baby carp? Yeah. All right, should we put him back? Now, a lot of people ask me whether or not you can catch carp in the wintertime, and obviously the answer is yes, but it's very, very much location specific. My theory is that carp stay active all winter long as long as they have a readily available food source. So here in the Ebro River, we've got tons of these freshwater clams, and this is a great forage for carp. It's got a lot of, of nutrients, and they're easy for the carp to find. Uh, so when you see carp uh, rooting around in, in the mud, often what they're doing is they're eating clams. And these clams are available all winter long, and they don't take a lot of energy to, to, to find and eat, so it keeps the carp active all year round. And that's been what I found, that in places where there's lots of freshwater clams, the carp stay active all winter long. Well, the sun is beginning to set on a very successful day, but we're not giving up. We're gonna be fishing all night long. Nick's over there uh, cooking up a, a curry, which I have to confess I'm very excited about. Oh, that smells fantastic already. It's just onion. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Nick. This is great. Right? I'll show it. Here, Shada. Go on inside. Oh. Why go down? Oh. Oh, Mike. Oh. Hold on. Buddy, there was a beep on the line here. Wait. Oh, there. get down. We're about ready to freshen up our bait before heading to bed and reel in the the pellet rod. Use these for live bait for wells? Yep, they do. I bet they do. Oh, it looks delicious. Well, it's the end of a great day and uh, we're still fishing. I've got my alarms on and the rod's in the water and something comes along and, and bites. It's going to wake me up, hopefully, and uh, I'm going to run out there and get it. So, uh, but anyway, any rate, for tonight, it's good night and I'll see you guys in the morning. Well, good morning. Sun just barely came up. And uh, I think there's a little roach or something on the end of this end of this line. There we go. But I've got a vibe that uh, early afternoon today is going to be where the, all the action's at. So we're going to see what happens. But we're going to keep at this spot because there's definitely definitely stuff happening. All right, these are the 20 millimeter halibut pellets that we're using, and they come pre-drilled with these holes in them. So what this is, this is called a gated baiting needle because it's got this little thumb on it, kind of like a crab claw. Okay, this right here is a pellet rig and it works a little bit different than the traditional hair rig. Pull it all the way through. And then you open up this very large loop on the end and basically do a cow hitch knot and that ties it on. That sucker won't come off. And this is, you want to use this rather than a bait stop because these pellets slowly dissolve over time and that hole will get larger and larger. And so if you had a bait stop, they would fall off prematurely. But if you use this uh, uh, pellet knot, pellet rig, it'll stay on much longer. Pellet rig with a little stringer of pellets. Hey bud, do you have a good night to rest? Yeah. You warm? Yeah. Well guys, we're here on another beautiful morning and we've got some sausage cooking on the pan and some toast going and it's uh it's not too bad. The sun's come up and starting to warm up. I think we're gonna get ourselves another monster carp today. I don't think. So yeah, I'll go and get the I'll get another marks there where he's missing. Oh some yeah, skills. no, no, that's something's had a little Probably go well, him. Sir. Wells or Xander. Yeah. W as you would call, walleye. There she goes. Well, it's been quiet, a little too quiet. So we're going to spread out our rods a little bit. There we go, we're in. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Oh gosh. Woo. Ooh. Porker. 
Oh, he did us the courtesy of unhooking himself. That is a porker. Okay. Whew. 32. Not bad. This is a lovely 32 pound carp and he is getting all sorts of wiggly on me. Took a halibut pellet about uh, maybe 20, 30 minutes after we cast it out. <sighs> Loads of fun. What a huge, huge carp. Oh. Oh, should we put him back? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. 32 pound carp. Look at that sucker. Come on. Are you living? He's getting a bend on him? Yeah. Oh ho! -ho. You did it, Nate! You just landed him! Good job, buddy! Well, Nathan, that is a chunky fish. Oh, well, I'm thinking mid 30s, right? Yeah, again? <laughs> yeah. Tommy's best is 36 and a half. You, maybe, maybe you can beat Tommy's best here. Oh man, look at the hump on his yeah, back. Be a bit bigger than Quasimodo. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Close. Right. Is I'm gonna kneel here and hold him, and you're gonna help me by putting your hands underneath him, okay? Put my, putting my hands underneath him. Uh, okay. They smile. Jeez. Jeez. Oh. oh. Let's see. Oh, That's okay. good. This game back. All right. oh, 35 pounds. Look at that beast. Good job, buddy. High five. Good. There you go. Good job, Nate. Way to get your hand on a Spanish Ebro carp. That's why we're here at the Ebro. These fish, they just average huge. Um, Nick was telling me that the average fish was in the 30s. So. We just landed two average fish. I mean, that's amazing. I catch hundreds of carp in my area and will never catch a 30 pound carp in most lakes I fish. And here they just everywhere. I'm on the snag. That's the snag board. Easy, 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 easy. I think I'll keep it, keep it on. I'll keep the fish on. So, the reason why you're hearing a ticking sound on the video is I set, set this up for time lapse just when the when the cart hit and that's my time lapse uh, pan device right here. Oh these carp are just massive. Oh this one's a bit heavy. Oh nice and orange as well. Oh he was spunky. He came out of the water, splashed a bit. So 34 and a half. 34 and a half. Oh, he did that. Sorry, let me get you wet. No problem. What a gorgeous fish, our third monster. Whoa, Do it again. third of four. I'm putting it back. Easy, easy. All right, I'm gonna. Ooh. Chris, you thought a no fish. I know. <sighs> this one's a mere 20, upper 20, so a smallish mid 20s. <laughs> Quite right, cool. Slip him back if you can. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, there we go, guys. Four awesome fish today. On the smallest one, 25 pounds. Anywhere you can go and the smallest fish of the day is 25 pounds, that's pretty amazing. Well, guys, we hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we have just had an absolutely amazing trip here, and this was so much fun and i'm glad i was able to take my boy with me um i'm going to put information in the video description about uh, nick shattuck's guide service and how you can contact him if you want to find out more details about this trip but if you guys also want to see a more detailed video about this trip and all the behind the scenes and vlog and travel and everything check out my other channel the outdoor boys youtube channel where we'll have a similar video that's kind of less about fishing and more about the travel uh, posted and I'll put a link in the description of that as well but hopefully you guys enjoy this video if you want to see more great videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel don't forget to <laughs> yeah we put out new videos every Saturday morning thanks for watching guys